Good evening. I call to order this August 2nd meeting of the Winston-Salem City Council and pursuant to the policies and procedures adopted by the City Council relative to virtual meetings, I've determined that it's not feasible for the City Council and I to meet together tonight physically and therefore all council members are participating virtually. Council members will vote by roll call vote. Council member will be recognized and they will state your vote. Would the City Clerk please call the roll. Councilmember Larson. Present. Councilmember Clark. Here. Councilmember Mundy. Present. Councilmember Scipio. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Here. Councilmember Taylor. My apologies, President. Councilmember McIntosh. Here. Councilmember Burke. Here. Thank you, everyone. Would you please join the city council and me in a moment of silence? Thank you very much. Tonight's agenda of the City Council is comprised of the following items. We have eight zoning petitions. There's an item approving financial assistance to Project Health. There's an item related to proceeds related to the settlement of the opioid litigation. There's an item related to the Purdue Pharma Chapter 11 bankruptcy reorganization plan, as well as a closed session. The zoning petition and the financial assistance items are listed for the hearing. When these public hearings are called, persons in the, uh, will be given an opportunity to speak virtually. If there is uh, opposition to the zoning petitions, the proponents and the opponents will be each given 15 minutes for presentation and three minutes for rebuttal. If no one wishes to speak, the public hearings will be closed and the city council will consider the items. Written comments on these items were accepted on the public hearing uh, item for 24 hours prior to the start of the meeting tonight. The meeting is being, being televised live tonight on TV 13, and it will be replayed Tuesday at 9 a.m. and again Wednesday at 9 p.m. Real uh, copies of our agenda as well as videos of previous meetings are always available online at the city's website, www.cityofws.org, and just click on the watch meetings online option. Ms. Keeney, would we have the first item? Item 3-1, public journal bonus petition of Frederick W. Fogg, Lanier Williams Real Estate, LLC, C1LB, from LB and RS9 to LBS. Property is located at the northeast corner of Ebert Road in West Clemensville, located at the northeast corner of Ebert Road and West Clemensville Road, containing approximately 4.98 acres, located in the South Ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Uh, Mr. King, is there anyone signed up in opposition to this uh, zoning petition? Mayor Jones, we've got a few folks here in support. No one signed up in opposition. Very good. Thank you. Well, in that case, I'll close the hearing and I'll recognize Council Member Larson if you would like to make a motion or if you'd like a presentation. Um, Mr. Mayor, I would appreciate a quick uh, 2000 view on, on this project just because it's so important to the South Ward to have this product going in down there. It's right on the border. We're going to capture some money from Davidson County with it, I think. Okay, good. Mr. King, would you give us a brief uh, summary? Great. Yep. Give me one second here. And Meredith, oh, there we go. Meredith bailed me out there. Um, all right. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council members. This is only case W3471. Uh, Sandy already gave you the nuts and bolts of it there on the beginning. And this is a request to rezone from LB and RS9 to LBS. Next slide, please. Here's a location map with the subject property shown in yellow. You can see it's there on the northeast corner of Ebert Road and West Clemensville Road. This is a little bit of a commercial activity center here in the southern portion of the city. Um, and what's being proposed here, again, you can see the portion of the site on the western portion of the site is already zoned LB. The eastern portion zoned RS9, and this request is for LBS zoning for the entire portion in yellow. Next slide, please. Here's the aerial image. You can see the existing convenience store located really there on the corner of this site. The vast majority of the remainder of the site is undeveloped. 
You'll see how that relates to the proposed site plan here shortly. Next slide. A few photos taken on site. This is looking uh, north into the site from Everett Road at the existing convenience store. Next slide. This is looking at an older commercial shopping center there in the southwest corner of that intersection. Next slide. And this is the family dollar that was recently constructed a few years ago there in the northwest corner of the same intersection. Next slide, please. This is an image from the South Suburban Area Plan that was adopted in 2017, and it does recommend commercial zoning for this northeast corner of the site, so the request is consistent with those area plan recommendations. Next slide. And here's the proposed site plan. So to get you oriented here, West Clemensville Road would be at the bottom of this image, and then Everett Road would be on the left-hand side of this image. Uh, what you see there is the building pulled up to the street, about a 5,200-square-foot 5, convenience store with the pumps and parking oriented inward towards the site. There is a detached car wash. You can see that's the small orange block there to the, to the right. Additional landscaping has been provided along the frontages of Clemensville and Everett to kind of help provide some additional screening there. So we applaud the developer for doing that. Next slide, please. These are the elevations submitted with this request. Next slide, please. So in quick summary, as I mentioned, the area plan does support commercial use at this location. Uh, the building placement is consistent with those area plan recommendations and it does have attractive building elevations with it. Includes enhanced landscaping, as I noted, along the two road frontage there to minimize the impacts from, uh, from, uh, from the convenience store use. Next slide. And this request was heard by the Planning Board for June 10th public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition and the board voted nine to zero to recommend approval of this request. I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. King. Are there any questions, Mr. King? All right, seeing none, uh, Mr. Larson, if you're ready for a motion, I would entertain it. John, I think you're muted, buddy. You keep getting me muted. Are we good now? Yes. Uh, yes. The petition of Frederick W. Frog, the Neil Williams Real Estate LLC and MDC NCILB, case number W3471, motion for approval. I move for one, approval of the statement of significance. A statement of consistency for the approval of the item and approval of the agenda item Z1. Is there a second? Second, second. Monday. Thank you, second. Any further discussion? Now we'll go to the roll call. Uh, Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Clark? Yes. Councilmember Monday? Aye. Councilmember Scipio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Councilor McIntosh? Aye. Councilor Burke? Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Item Z2, public hearing on zoning petition of Salem Congregation from C to IG. Property is located at the southeast corner of East Salem Avenue and Ramps Drive and the east side of City Yard. Well, Thank you, Mr. King. Are there anyone in opposition to this one signed up? We have no speaker signed up for this case. All right, very good. Well, I will close the public hearing and I recognize Councilmember Scipio. Uh, Mr. Mayor, can we have a brief presentation? Yes, brief one, uh, Mr. King. All right, Meredith, if you don't mind pulling up this slideshow, we'll run through this one pretty quickly. Zoning from campus zoning to institutional and public. Next slide, please. So here you can see the subject property identified in yellow. Again, it's at that southeast corner there of um, Salem Avenue and Rams Drive. So to the north, you've got the cemetery there and the southern portion of Innovation Quarter. You've got City Yard there to the east, zone GI, and then you've got um, Salem College there, zone C to the west. Next slide. This is an aerial image of the subject property outlined in yellow. You can see a few scattered residential structures there that face Salem Avenue on the western portion of this. And you can see the development pattern within the area there. Next slide, please. A couple of the photos taken on site. This is kind of at the top of the hill looking south on East Salem Avenue. The subject property would be behind the white fencing there that you see in the background of this photo. Next slide. 
This is coming down the hill a little bit on Salem Avenue. The subject property will be to the left there, and you can see a couple of those residential structures I referenced earlier. Next slide. This is all the way, or most of the way down the hill at the roundabout, and you're kind of looking back north up Salem Avenue, back into the subject property. It sits probably behind the trees that you see there. It's not the first lot in the foreground, but it's up the hill a little bit from that area. Next slide. This is an image from the South Central Winston Salem area plan, and you can see the subject property shown there. Uh, the western half is recommended for institutional use. The eastern portion was recommended for mixed use. Um, as you can see, the, the, the land use there was largely made up of, of the, the institutional uses that were uh, present in the area when the area plan was done. Next slide, please. So in summary, the area plan does recommend institutional zoning. The site is surrounded by campus and industrial zoning and the uses allowed in the IP district should be compatible with the existing land uses in the area. Next slide. This request was heard by the planning board at their June 10th public hearing. There were no speakers in opposition and the planning board voted nine to zero to recommend approval of this request. And I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. King. Any questions, Mr. King? All right, seeing none, I'll recognize Councilman Supio if you're ready for a motion. Yes, I move for one, the approval of the statement of consistency for approval of this item and two, approval of agenda item Z2. Second. Motion and second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Now we'll go to the roll call. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Clark? Yes. Councilmember Mundy? Aye. Aye. Councilmember Scipio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes. Councilmember Taylor? Yes. Councilmember McIntosh? Aye. Councilmember Burke? Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Item Z3. Great public hearing on the back hand name of Front Street, Waldorf, LLC, for changes related to modifying the overall site layout in the HLIS zoning district. The property is located on the northeast corner of Waldorf Road and Shirley Weaver Road, containing approximately 91.58 acres located in the southeast corner. Planning board recommends the decision. Thank you, Ms. King. Is anyone in opposition on this one? Uh, Mayor Joins, we do have one person signed up in opposition on this case. All right, so we'll go to a public hearing on this. Uh, for the proponents, you would have 15 minutes for presentation. Mayor Joins, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and call the first speaker. Please. First person signed up in support of this is Luke Dickey. Luke, if you're with us, go ahead and feel free to unmute, give your name and address for the record, and begin your remarks. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Adams and Council. My name is Luke Dickey, Stimmel Associates, 601 North Trade Street, Suite 200, 27101. I'm here representing Front Street Capital in regards to this site plan amendment case. Just kind of a little brief history. Uh, this originally went through a site plan amendment with Forsyth County in 2019. Um, with that plan, we had basically three buildings that were shown, um, excuse me, four buildings that were shown overall on this plan, uh, and then it was annexed into the city. Um, after that point, RDAW had come in with their plans for the large building on the site, so we had come through with the site uh, kind of a staff change uh, due to the total amount of square footage that they were proposing. So they went from a 500,000 square foot building, which was originally planned, uh, to a 600,000 uh, square foot building. So with that staff change, we removed one of the central buildings to stay within the total square footage of what the original approved plan was. Um, and then once that kind of got established with that staff change, so our dog can move forward, uh, Front Street Capital uh, wanted to take that center portion of the site um, and come back in with a 100,000 square foot, about 110,000 square foot facility, uh, which necessitated this site plan amendment request because of the added square footage. Um, as part of that, we uh, had revised the traffic impact analysis with uh, Ramey Kemp had provided that summary, which was in your packet. Uh, once we knew what RDAW, the kind of was the, their plan was there, we were able to revise our total traffic count uh, because of that. And actually with the, them being a known entity, we were able to reduce the total trips that were gonna be generated from this pro overall project uh, fairly significantly. Uh, and I believe that that total was uh, weekday trips went down by 786 trips, uh, uh, peak hour AM by 268 reduction and then the PM 
uh, peak hour went down by 261. So there was going to be a reduction in overall traffic uh, in regards to this case. Uh, all conditions will carry forward uh, from the original uh, plan approval, uh, also which includes the improvements to Shirley Weevil um, and also along Wahlberg Road, um, as well as that those being approved and reviewed by NCDOT and Winston DOT um, in regards to any driveway permits in regards to that. Uh, back in May, uh, when we had submitted this case, we sent out a neighborhood outreach letter uh, to those uh, surrounding the site and then on further down Shirley Weevil uh, Road. Uh, we had not heard any uh, comments from any of those uh, uh, members, uh, of course, then we're not required to send out notifications for staff, uh, site plan amendments, uh, but we want to go ahead and we and we did that uh, anyway, just to kind of notify them. Uh, so we didn't hear back from any of the neighbors at that point, uh, went to the planning board uh, with no opposition and they had recommended approval. Uh, so that's just kind of a brief overview of our case. I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any at this time. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Uh, anyone you. else for the proponents? Mayor Jones, uh, Luke was the only person signed up as a proponent. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, we'll go then to the uh, opposition. If you would introduce that person, uh, Mr. King. Absolutely. Uh, the first person signed up and the only person signed up is Richard Joe Henning. Richard, if you're with us, please unmute, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. Yes, good evening. Um, my name is Rich Joe Henning and I'm a homeowner at 4232 Shirley Weevil Road. Uh, which is down the road from the uh, uh, site. Um, I'm not necessarily in opposition to the project, um, and I take exception to the gentleman that stated there were no comments made during the meeting. I was at the meeting and did voice concerns over the traffic and the conditions of the road, both Wahlberg and Shirley Weevil. Uh, I noticed that we have had from uh, the traffic across the street at Union Cross Business Park, we have had several instances where uh, Wahlberg Road is blocked on the northbound side due to the heavy volume of tractor trailers waiting to get into the site. Uh, I don't see any guarantee. Well, it's stated that there's going to be a reduction in traffic. I, I, that there's no guarantee that that's actually going to happen. Uh, I do have photographs of instances where Wahlberg Road was blocked down to one lane. I've also uh, called the uh, Forsyth County Sheriff's Office to uh, note that the road was blocked at the time I was trying to get out from Shirley Weevil onto Wahlberg Road. Um, I don't know what the status of, of that ever came out. Um, also, uh, I know that, um, again, this, this project's going to occur, uh, but my concerns are that since we're opening up uh, a chance to review uh, the site plan, uh, my concern also is the uh, berm that's been uh, stated to happen on the Shirley Weevil side. Um, they're saying they're going to put a four-foot berm. Well, I see in the permit docs also that they're going to put a four-foot berm and also pine trees. Um, a four-foot berm and pine trees, uh, the building, from what I understand, is slated to be 40 feet tall. Um, I don't understand how any berm that's four foot tall and a couple of pine trees is going to block it. Uh, so I, I think there are two items that uh, could be addressed. One is the condition of Wahlberg and Shirley Weevil roads. I understand that Wahlberg uh, Front Street is not responsible for the damage that's occurred to Wahlberg Road, but it will be a contributing factor further on down. Um, again, during the meeting with Front Street Capital, I brought that subject up and they said they were simply um, directed by the uh, Department of Transportation to uh, put a coat of asphalt down on the road. Um, and um, I know from personal experience that a coat not going to solve problems. The road is heavily pitted uh, directly between Union Cross Business Park and uh, the new site, and uh, it's just going to break up as, as trucks roll over it. 
I asked that uh, the road be milled and a, co a new asphalt surface be put down. And they said at this point, that's not required. So that wasn't gonna happen. Uh, again, it's, it's just a note that uh, if we're opening this up, this at least site plan approval and increasing the size of one of the buildings, uh, maybe we should look again at the subject of Walberg Road, which is in bad shape and getting worse. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your comments. So now we'll circle back uh, to the proponents. Uh, so Dickie, you would have uh, three minutes for any rebuttal you'd like to present. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, kind of at this time, uh, Mr. Joe Henning, I apologize, but I was referring to the last uh, planning board meeting that we had where we had nobody show up in opposition or speak at that, that time. So you may be referring to a, a time that was before. So I apologize if there was a misunderstanding in my comments uh, that were made. Uh, but overall, in terms of Shirley Weevil and onto Albert Road, uh, we as Demo Associates along with Front Street Capital are working on those road widening plans for those requirements uh, from NCDOT. Uh, so we are working with them on what those are going to be and those will be permitted uh, for those improvements. So there are going to be improvements made to Shirley Weevil and to Wahlberg Road in regards to this plan, as well as the signalization up at Business Park Drive for the new uh, connection that will go there into this property. Um, and then uh, otherwise, everything else at this point is uh, basically per conditions that were agreed to um, on the original site plan amendment that was going through. So this is just, again, a request to, to add in that 110,000 square feet. So at this point, I have no, no other comments. I appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Uh, Mr. Johanny, you would have uh, three minutes of rebuttal as well, if you'd like. Um, sir, in... The only comment I have was the uh, meeting that I was referring to was the uh, neighborhood meeting that was conducted with Front Street Capital uh, before the project really got underway. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Seeing no other comments, I'll close the public hearing and uh, recognize Councilmember Taylor if you would like, a, if you're ready to make a motion or you'd like a presentation. I've got a couple of questions if I can, Mayor. Absolutely. Mr. King, uh, there were some plans mentioning about DOT uh, working to make improvements for the road, some road widening permits. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because it, it sounds like Mr. Johanning's concerns deals around traffic and the conditions of the roads. So I just want to make sure his concerns were addressed before we move forward with a motion. Yeah, uh, Councilmember Taylor, so if you, um, so, so I know this is the first time City Council is seeing this. We've we handled two separate requests with the Board of Commissioners on this when this parcel was located and unincorporated for Scythe County. And when the very first request came in and then when the site plan amendment request came in, we had a pretty long list. I feel if you have the permit document in front of you um, for our driveway permit condition, we've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bullet points of road improvements that are required for this request. and and. As you know, that's a pretty significant amount when you see those driveway permit conditions come through frequently. Um, there, there's a lot of work that has to be done to Wahlberg, to Shirley Weevil in terms of widening, turn lane improvements, things of that nature. So a lot of that, that, that ground has been plowed already and those conditions carry forward with this request that's before you tonight. Thank you. And can we talk a little bit about the berm? Yeah, we can. So um, one of the things that, that was a really big point of discussion on this case as, as we reviewed it at planning board and commissioners previously was um, these are really, this is a really large building, the southernmost building there. And if you've been out in this area, you know that one of the things that makes Wahlberg Business Park so successful is the treatment along Wahlberg Road in terms of the berming and the landscaping that's there. It really does a good job now that it's had nearly 20 years to grow and mature of hiding the, the buildings that are located behind it. And so from the very first step along this process, we worked with the developer to make sure we had a similar treatment along Wahlberg Road, and we wanted to extend that around Shirley Weevil. So that was negotiated as part of the original rezoning, and that carries forward with this rezoning. So it's the same level of planting requirements in terms of quantities and species that we looked at when we did Wahlberg Business Park, and it carries forward to this request as well. All right. So based off what I've heard and based off the concerns that I've heard from Mr. Joe Henning, I feel like we have a plan in place to address his concerns. Uh, I will say before I make a motion, sir, 
Um, I will get your information. I will follow up with you. Some of the concerns you listed were following the Department of the State uh, DOT, but I'm willing to work with you and the state to try to solve your concerns. And when I give my word, uh, I keep it. So uh, at this time, I'll go ahead and move, uh, put a motion on the table. And if there's any discussion, we can go for it. Um, I move for one, approval of the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, approval of agenda item Z3. Thank you. Second. second. Thank you. Motion second. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, we'll go to the roll call. Councilmember Larson. You're muted. Thank you, muted, John. Y yes. Thank you. Councilor Clark? Yes. Councilor Mundy? Aye. Councilor yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes. Councilor Taylor? Yes. Councilor McIntosh? Aye. Councilor Burke? Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Item Z4. Public hearing on zoning petition of Terry Ray Hicks for more RS9 to RS9S, property located on the north side. South Thorn Road between Willow Street and Urban Street, containing approximately 0.22 acres, located in the southwest ward. Turn of order of Ms. Bogle's petition. Thank you. Mr. King, is anyone in opposition to this rezoning? We do have one person here to speak in opposition, Mayor Jones. All right, we'll go to the public hearing. Uh, the proponents would have uh, 15 minutes if you would introduce them, Mr. King. All right, um, Mr. Hicks, uh, this is a proponent. So Mr. Hicks, if you're with us, feel free to unmute, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. My name is Terry Hicks. I live at 810 South Hawthorne Road, Winston-Salem 27103. And um, I've applied for this uh, to convert an existing garage into um, uh, additional living quarters uh, that I hope to use for my uh, elderly sister who is, um, was displaced when the nearby apartments were destroyed and we moved during pandemic, but um, that has not been a good situation and her health is in decline. I am the closest caregiver and so that would just simplify both of our lives. Um, I've answered all of the questions from the planners uh, I delivered letters to all of the property owners surrounding my property um, and across the street from the property. I had several uh, uh, neighbors who have responded uh, with warm support, especially the neighbors who were directly next to me and across the street from me in support. This will not change the view from the street. It will not change the amount of traffic at my house. Uh, this will not cause any need for street parking. I am not building a building um, that is not already existing, so um, there'll be no paving. Uh, so this is not changing any water or uh, issues like that of storm runoff. Um, it is simply using property. I've lived here one month shy of 16 years, and I love Ardmore, and I hope I have many more decades to live here. Um, I'm just trying to make this uh, a usable situation for my family needs right now um, and to make use of what we have. Thank you, Mr. Hicks. Uh, anyone else for the proponents? Mayor Joins, that's all we've got for proponents. All right, thank you. If you would then introduce the uh, opposition. I will, Mayor Joins. The, we have somebody here to speak in opposition. It's Beth Riggs. I believe Beth is with Desmond in the committee room. So Desmond may need to get Ms. Riggs set up so that she can begin her remarks. So Okay, I see Ms. Riggs there. So if you're ready, you can uh, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. I am, uh, this is Beth Riggs. I live at 814 Miller Street. Um, the reason I oppose this is, okay, he's setting us up for all these little garages to be made into our apartments. It, because when you pass this, then you set up for all the neighbors around us. I have a house next door that has a small garage and it's fallen in and he could make it an apartment like Mr. Hicks. And then we got all this issues of uh, two homes in one land. I bought in Ardmore in 1993. I, I chose a house over an apartment so I wouldn't have uh, um, 
problems that apartments bring. I want a, sing, a single house, you know, single houses. We live where, you know, you, we have to go to the bank and, and, and live in this house. Renters, they don't have to, uh, they, they can just live almost anywhere. But that's why I oppose it. And it can bring down the value of the house. And if, and if like my house is uh, the neighbors next door put their garage into an apartment, then you got parking, the cars, multiple cars. Uh, You know, and if I understand it's a family member, but once that person's um, deceased, then it's open for whatever, another, any renter. And see, so that's, you know, it's now, a, he's saying a, a family member, but, you know, you, it's just bringing problems to our area when you make two, two residents out of one, out of one piece of land. So that's why, you know, if he has issues, uh, you know, People buy bigger houses, put their family members in a in a um, um, a suite um, off, or he can just do like the neighbors next door or down or next to him. Add on to the back side of that house, make it a bigger house for him. That's the reason I opposed it because I wanted to left as a one family residential area, and it's going to bring problems on us with houses that's got garages next to us that um, are garages and then they decide to put them in apartments. And somebody come look at my house and they see that house next uh, made an apartment next door and it's, and, and they're, you know, ramp, uh, hooping and hollering and they may not want to buy my house. Just, uh, that's why I want it left as a, I bought into a one family residential. I want it left like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hicks, you would have three minutes for a rebuttal if you'd like. You're, you're muted, Mr. Hicks. I certainly hear Ms. Riggs' concern, and I, I don't want any hooping and hollering going on in my neighborhood either. I've lived here for, like I said, a month shy of 16 years. My property is is surrounded with fence. Um, I believe that our, our ordinances around here provide us protection from having uh, disruptive neighbors. And as well to the very back of my house, backing up, I guess, then to her property off of Miller Street as well, is a four apartment building. Across the street from that is a four apartment building. I'm not gonna have any kind of that level of density. This is one person. And yes, it could be uh, a person outside of a family member, but I'm gonna be a neighbor here too. And I still want my neighborhood to be credible and, and, and um, uh, that is not in any way where this project is going. And I, I, I definitely hear her, her fears and her concerns and I share those. I don't want that in my neighborhood, but that is not at all what this is. And um, I believe that we've, we've provided coverage for those, those concerns. And I believe that we have the ability to address those if they should arise anywhere in our neighborhood. Thank you, Ms. Fix. Um, for the uh, opposition, you'd have three minutes for any comments you'd like to make. Yeah, uh, well, you can't pick your renters when your neighbors put the renters in there. You can't pick those. And you know, I, I, I'm not in no position to have to go to court with these people, you know, because what kind of choice of people they put in a renter. I, I, I'm a quiet, I want it left quiet. My neighbors are quiet. No, your family, you, you, we don't know what's gonna go ahead once your, your sister, is um, um, is um, taking out of your residential in, in your apartment. We don't know what's going to happen to that, and we just I just don't want to have to deal with that problem when it comes up because it could be prevented today than having it just a single family uh, houses. Just just think about all y'all where you live at, and everybody put a apartment behind your house because mine this garage is right here at the at the line or where is the property supposed to be and I, I can't put a fence there so and because it's concrete and you know it's just it's just wrong to have a, a, a apartments in the back of everybody's houses thank you very much uh, i'll declare the public hearing closed and i recognize councilmember monday if you'd like a presentation or if you're ready for a motion Thank you, Mayor Joins. I don't think we need a presentation. This is a very simple matter. I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Hicks. He came to me when he first started this project. 
uh, invited me to come look at the site. There is an existing footprint. He is not making any changes. Uh, he's simply converting uh, that building for, for use. And um, I would like to ask Aaron just to give us a, a little brief overview. Um, from what I understand, accessory dwelling units and apartments is not a new thing. They have existed in the past. So I believe there is a, a, a fairly generous uh, sampling of existing apartments. Can you tell us a little more about that, Aaron? Uh, sure, Councilmember Mundy. You're you're absolutely right. Um, <clears throat> Ardmore is a is a neighborhood that was built when you kind of had a mixture of dwelling units within the neighborhood, and so it is not uncommon <clears throat> as you're traversing Ardmore to find um, corner duplexes right down the street on um, Hawthorne. It's not uncommon to see quadruplexes, triplexes mixed in with single family homes. You've got small apartment buildings. You've got accessory dwelling units within the neighborhood. So. Um, and, and Ardmore is not alone. That is pretty common in our older neighborhoods as a whole. So, but certainly in Ardmore, that is a feature that is very common throughout throughout the, the fabric of the neighborhood. Thank you. And the other thing I'd like to add it's for the opponent, I also hear your concerns and, and understand them. Um, I have done a good bit of research and, and gone to a couple of symposiums on accessory dwelling units to learn more. Your concerns, your, your fears are not um, unheard of. They are, are usually the common concerns that people have. But when we look at the quantitative data, uh, we find that accessory dwelling units do not cause problems with parking and they have actually worked to increase property value. So um, I, I am very much in favor of this. And having said that, I would move for one, the approval of the state consistency for approval of this item and two, approval of agenda item Z4. Second, McIntosh. Thank you, motion is second. Any further discussion? Uh, can, uh, Mayor Pro Kim Adams. Yes, uh, I would like to tell the gentleman, what was his name, Mr. Witt? Hicks. Hicks, uh, thank you so much for doing what you're doing for your loved one. Uh, I know nobody wishes it upon anyone to have to change their life and measures of where they've lived uh, to be able to attend a loved one. But I think, you know, Mr. Hicks, what we're seeing is, and uh, council knows I've been on this soapbox for a while, about the accessory dwellings and the smaller lodgings and tiny houses. I'm sure we have much more or many more battles to fight but as I tell people, you know, the ones that go first, uh, I commend you for your bravery, your kindness, and, and we appreciate you for what you're doing because practically everybody on this call is over 50 or 60 years old. So our day is coming too. Uh, but again, I thank you and, and for the Ms. Riggs, uh, the community. Uh, I understand that change is hard to adapt or accept. I got that. Uh, you guys might not want apartments, but I got, and Councilmember McIntosh, we got student housing going up in our neighborhood where it's, it's, it's basically, it's outnumber, it outnumbers all the residents that don't go to college at Wake Forest. So uh, again, I look forward to these conversations and other planning and zoning meetings, Mr. King, uh, because I know they're gonna be plenty. And again, I look forward to it because we can't claim we care about the homeless and affordable housing and people not being able to pay their rent and, and things like that. And then turn around and say, not in my backyard, you can't do that. But uh, I'm hoping Winston-Salem will be a city that's not only intentional about uh, helping to fix our housing issue, but uh, compassionate in going forth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councilman McIntosh. Yeah, I'm gonna make a comment here that I hope allays some of Ms. Riggs' fears. It, it, it may not, but I grew up in a house with an accessory dwelling behind it. My first house was a duplex. Ardmore was built around duplexes. The corner of Hawthorne and Miller, Hawthorne and Academy, there's a duplex. Um, there are you know, four or five of them. They're part of the fabric, as, as um, Mr. King said. So they are, they are not something that is going to introduce radical change in the neighborhood. 
Um, the nature of who rents is different than it was 10 years ago, even five years ago. People now are choosing to rent instead of own because they don't know if they're going to be in a town for long enough to build equity in their house. So t people choose to rent now, not as a last resort, but as a quality of life statement. And the more we can do to accommodate them and the conversion of garage apart garages into apartments where there is no additional runoff or stormwater issues i think the more we should encourage that the our most recent development dashboard came out and it had an astounding number of new housing starts 800 units between new single family homes and apartments that's amazing that is a drop in the bucket compared to what we need we are 14 to 16,000 units short 800 just doesn't get us there, but everything we can do to, to add additional units to the marketplace, we should have been encouraging. And I, I agree with what the other speakers have said. This is not going to introduce a radical change in the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McIntosh. All right, we do have a motion to approve this uh, rezoning. A yes vote uh, approves the zoning. Uh, Councilor Larson? Councilor, I believe you're muted. Keep muting me. Uh, yes. Thank you. Customer Clark? Yes. Customer Mundy? Aye. Customer Scipio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes. Customer Taylor? Yes. Customer McIntosh? Aye. Customer Burke? Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Item Z5. Item Z5, public hearing on zoning petition of Jones Estate A and W LLC from MH and RS20 to MHS. Property is located on the north side of the road east of Glen High Road, containing approximately 9.72 acres, located in the southeast ward. Planning board recommends approval of the petition. Thank you, Mr. King. Is there anyone in opposition to this rezoning? Mayor Jones, we've got two speakers in support, one in opposition. All right, we'll go to the public hearing uh, for the uh, proponents. If you would introduce the first speaker. I'd be glad to. The first person signed up in support is Bill Greco. Bill, if you'd like to comment, please unmute yourself, give your name and address for the record, and begin your remarks. Uh, good evening, Council. My name is Bill Greco. I'm with Land Solutions. Our office is located at 200 South Regional Road, in Greensboro, we're a consulting firm uh, working on this project on behalf of the owners. Um, with regards to this specific case, uh, first and foremost, thanks to the staff uh, across the board. Uh, they've been very good to work with and have helped us uh, throughout every step of the process. Councilman Taylor also, we've, we've had some, some in exchanges with, with him as well uh, to get us to where we are this evening. I, the staff report, I don't want to regurgitate it, um, but suffice it to say that this project is in compliance with the ordinance and with the goals and the planning and all, all of our applicable and relevant documents that we use uh, when making these land use determinations. Uh, the company, the owner of this project, this is their business model. Um, since then, they've, they've made a significant amount of improvements. Uh, they've paved the streets, they've trimmed trees, they've repaired water and sewer lines, uh, put up some signage. Their, their mission statement and what, what they do with these, these communities is they, they create communities that are safe and desirable and provide that housing opportunity and that diversity in housing that uh, we so frequently speak of. Uh, they do have a strong management program and processes in place. They have uh, rules and regulations that they improve, uh, that they impose, excuse me, uh, upon these residents. And, you know, overall, they, they have a very quality program. Uh, they have multiple locations across multiple states. Uh, and I can tell you they've, they've made a, a very, very significant improvement to this site. Uh, we did host um, in various ways some, some meetings and some exchanges with some neighboring property owners. Uh, some of them uh, have been there for quite some time. And they did have legitimate uh, concerns, but those concerns were no different than concerns that we would hear in any type of uh, community. You know, noise, radios being played loud, 
trash, these types of things. Uh, and our applicant owner this evening has, has definitely uh, heard those uh, statements. They've made adjustments to their program. They've, they've made follow-up efforts. So they're, they're not going away. They're active in their communities. They want these communities to thrive and to uh, fit seamlessly into their surroundings. So with that said, again, um, we do meet all the, we do check all the boxes and meet all the goals and the plans. Uh, staff has recommended approval. Planning board has recommended approval. And we would appreciate your vote of approval this evening on this matter. I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Greco. Uh, is there someone else for the proponents? Here joins the second speaker is Robert Schunk. Robert, if you're with us, uh, please unmute, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. Uh, good evening, uh, Robert Schunk, uh, 2310 South Miami Boulevard in Durham. Uh, Bill uh, represented us uh, quite well and uh, I will be available for any uh, follow-up questions or comments you might have. Thank you, Mr. Schunk. Okay, for the opposition then, uh, Mr. King, if you would introduce the uh, individual who's opposed to this. I will. It looks like they are also in the committee room with Desmond. I believe they're getting to the podium there. It's Steve Allred. Steve, looks like you're ready. Go ahead and yep. give your name and yep. address for the record and begin your remarks. Steve Allred, 3930 Glen High Road. Um, first of all, I'm not against anybody. I think everybody's got to live somewhere and... Um, I've been there since uh, 81. I moved back from Kentucky and um, have a horse farm. It backs up to this property. Um, I've had horses shot at with bow and arrows. I've had a hay set on fire. Uh, I had fireworks went off and brood mares slipped their foals. Uh, all these things, I have nobody I can go to. And, um, you know, it's... You know, I would if they would show that they would be good, better neighbors than what has been. Um, I'd feel a little bit better. And it's not just me. Um, I'm here for. There's five widows around me for ages from 70 to 101, and they're all in opposition. They're not. They won't speak. They're not going. But uh, I, I check in on them, and I and uh, they would like for me to say a word and that's what I'm here for a word. Uh, the owners have come and talked to me and they sound good and right and um, all that. And I know this is a very profitable thing and, and uh, I'm sure I'd hope the city would get more revenue for this number of uh, mobile homes. But um, uh, I understand there's the police call to that area has been rather high in the last couple of years. And, um, but I've always tried to be good neighbors to them. I've, uh, the boys wanted to set up a tree house on part of my property and, uh, had some other joining property that, uh, I had them to put their tree house in, in that property because it was not inside the fence with the horses. And, um, you know, I've, I've tried to, um, over the years, um, you know, I've had a good relationship with everybody down there, but, you know, it's been some times it's been very trying, you know, we, and, and I think my neighbors around me are concerned, um, about crimes, you know, they're, they're kind of scared, you know, and, um, you know, they've always my their opinion, but, um, I, I would like, I would hope that, I, we have we have a part time mobile home in the, at the beach. It's very strict uh, guidelines on painting and that sort of thing. And everybody has their mobile home all painted up nice. And you know it's uh, and if they could go about and, and dress it up and and uh, you know uh, and 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 show that they can be better neighbors. I think everybody would feel, feel better about it. Fireworks has been a big thing that, uh, and it was real bad the 4th of July. And I called the owners and, and, and warned them that uh, I, I hoped it wouldn't happen down there. And they said that they had told everybody that lived there that, that there would be a fine if they were caught. But I don't know nobody's catching anybody with these fireworks. And we, we had 30 head of horses running every which way on both farms. And we chased them for, 
for an hour to get them all hemmed up. Fourth of July was hell out there with fireworks, I'm telling you. And, uh, um, you know, but, you, you know, I, I'm not, like I say, I'm not against it. Anybody, everybody's got to live somewhere, and uh, I just hope it would hope will they'll be members of it. A lot of these ladies can't speak out, and I'm just here for them most of all. So um, that's it. Three minutes on rebuttal. Thank you, sir. Bill Greco with Land Solutions again. Uh, Mr. Allred's comments are not new to this applicant, nor are they new to my firm nor are they new to, I think, uh, planning board staff and this board. Some of them have come via email, so forth and so on. So what I would like to do is just put a little, little bit of additional context on Mr. Allred's comments. Uh, what he describes are operational issues. Uh, they are real issues. He has valid points. However, this is a land use hearing, and, and they're not entirely... Um, uh, you know that's not the only criteria for decision making, but but let me let me emphasize again and just briefly. This company has uh, this is a corporation. They have a corporate structure, so what they have is an on-site manager who's a resident in that park. That's the first point of contact. Those on-site partners, in turn, have a boss that they report to that is uh, responsible for a number uh, of those park managers. And then like any corporation, it goes right on up the ladder. Uh, we have provided that contact information out there. Uh, we have encouraged um, both sides of this equation to, uh, th this is all, I've been doing this a long time. This all comes down to meet your neighbors, talk to them, interact with each other. Uh, fireworks, I don't think that we can uh, really fix that in any community. Uh, I live in a single family community. Um, fireworks are a thing where I live as well. Uh, so the contact person and the operational questions and concerns, I think we do have uh, a good program in place. It's improving and getting better. As far as crime is concerned, uh, we have pulled and have the, the crime stats from, from the police departments. When this park was purchased in 2020, uh, the total number of incidents uh, declined. Thus far in 21, we're tracking for an additional decline. So we went from in 2019, uh, 19 calls, 2020, we had 15 calls. Thus far in 21, we've had five calls. Those numbers are a little skewed because they have a, I think the police department term is a frequent flyer. They have an elderly couple that is the, the predominant uh, reason why the police are, are being called to the property. Even with that, again, you know, we strive for a good community and a good program. So uh, thanks to Mr. Allred, and we'll continue doing our best to, to uh, reach out and be good neighbors. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Greco. Uh, Mr. Allwood, you'd have three minutes for rebuttal as well. I understand what he's saying, you know, and I would hope that all, all that's true. And I hope that my neighbors, that uh, they'll have a sense of peace about it. And uh, I think they're resolved that they don't have, or really don't have any, anything to set, you know, any recourse. I mean, you know, it's, uh, people need places to live. I mean, we're all aware of that. You know, and, uh, but I would hope that there would be better neighbors, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's been, it's, it's not been good over the years and what, what you do, you know, you, you live beside it and you do the best you can, you know, I used to be in the country and now I'm in the city. <laughs> I got a city farm out there. <laughs> This whatever, you know, I know you'll do the right thing. It's up to you. We're all for everybody. Lover neighbors are safe, right? Thank you, Mr. Allred. We appreciate yes. you. Uh -huh. I'll declare the public hearing closed and I recognize Councilmember Taylor. Uh, Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Um, I think thanks to everyone who spoke. I do think we have a need in this community for affordable housing, but the truth is, um, we just can't do it at the expense of the neighbors in the community. Um, as you know, in 12 years, I've never voted for a rezoning case in the residential community without meeting with the neighbors first. I know there was a community meeting lined up, the link didn't work, and I was not able to access the meeting. 
Uh, but I did want a little time to, it sounds like this project can work. It sounds like the neighbors can be supportive, but there's a few other things that have to take place first. I think it's my responsibility to meet with the neighbors and let's see if we can't carve out a plan. So it'd be my recommendation to leave the public hearing open, but to continue this item to the next zoning meeting so I can meet with the neighbors, talk with the developers and see if we can't hash out a plan that everybody can be happy with. Okay, so you're making a motion to continue this uh, until the uh, September zoning? Second. A motion second, Councilman Clark. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm okay to continue, but I will just make the comment I, from what I've heard tonight, I don't think the petitioner, the behavior that comes from this neighborhood has earned the privilege of expanding it. And unless I hear something significantly different that, that the behavior is going to change, I would not support this in the future. So, Mr. Taylor, you have your work cut out for you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so City Attorney Carmen, did you want to make a comment? Yes, uh, Mayor, thank you. The next zoning meeting uh, should be September 7th. So I think the motion is to continue the um, item until September 7th. Good, thank you. Uh, we have a motion to continue to September 7th. Uh, we'll go to roll call. Councilman Larson. I think you're muted, John. Yes. There you go, thank you. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Mundy. Aye. Councilor Recipio? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes. Councilor Taylor? Yes. Councilor McIntosh? Aye. And Councilor Burke? Yes. Thank you. We'll continue that till September 7th. Uh, thank you. Uh, item Z6. Item Z6 Public Hearing on Donation of Winston Salem Business Adventures LLC. From RS9 to HB, property is located on the east side of Germerson Road, north of North Patterson Avenue. Containing approximately 1.83 acres located in the northeast ward. Planning board recommends approval petition. Thank you. Mr. King, do we have anyone signed up in opposition to this? No one in opposition. One person signed up in support. Thank you. In that case, I'll declare the public hearing closed and would recognize uh, Councilmember Burke if uh, you want to make a motion or if you want a presentation. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. And uh, yes, could we have a brief presentation? Mr. King? Absolutely. Meredith, if you don't mind getting that one pulled up for me. All right, thank you. This is only case uh, W3480. And again, this is a general use rezoning from RS9 to HB, which is highway business. Next slide. And here is the location map with the subject property shown in yellow. You can see it on the east side of Germanton Road, just north of Patterson Avenue. What you'll see in this image is another commercial node. The vast majority of the intersection is already zoned commercially, whether it be highway business or general business. And the one standout is the piece of property that's before you tonight that is currently zoned residential. It is surrounded uh, to the north, west, and south by commercial. Here is an aerial image of the subject property. You can see the existing residential structure there on the front portion of the site and the commercial activity located at the other quadrants of the intersection. Next slide, please. And just a couple photos taken on site. This is looking into the subject property from Germanton Road. And looking across Germanton Road from the subject property at the convenience store and construction activity taking place. Next slide. This is an image from the Northeast Suburban Area Plan update with the subject property shown there. The, the area plan does have a um, special land use condition that shows that whole area in the dark brown is an area to consider for redevelopment for multifamily use. Um, given the existing zoning pattern in this area, the fact that it's largely zoned commercial all the way around it, staff is comfortable with the commercial zoning there. And there's also language in the area plan to support that as well. Next slide, please. So the proposed zoning is consistent with the adjacent properties which are currently zoned for highway business. The areas to the east, the neighborhood uh, to the east will maintain the RS9 zoning. And the site has access to water and sewer with good road access and it's suitable for a variety of commercial uses. Next slide, please. So this request was heard by the planning board at their June 10th at public hearing. There was one speaker in support and one in opposition. And some of the concerns raised included traffic along Germanton Road and impact on property values. 
the planning board did vote nine to zero to recommend approval of this request. And I'm glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. King? All right, seeing no one, I'll recognize uh, Councilmember Burke. Thank you, Mr. King. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at this time, I move for one, approval of the statement of consistency for approval of this item, and two, approval of agenda item Z6. Thank you, sir. Second. 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 Thank you. Any discussion? All right, go to the roll call. Uh, Councilor Larson. Yes. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Mundy. Aye. Councilor Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Councilor Robert Taylor. Yes. Councilor McIntosh. Aye. And Councilor Burke. Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Uh, if I didn't close the public hearing, I'm closing it now. <laughs> All right, item Z7. Item Z7, public hearing on site plan amendment of BRE to Carpet Whitaker Square LLC for changes modifying the overall site layout in the HBS zoning district. Property is located on the southeast corner of North Peacehaven Road in Whitaker Ridge Drive, containing approximately 12.19 acres located in the northwest ward. Plan board recommends approval of petition. Thank you. Uh, Mr. King, do we have opposition to this item? We do. All right, we'll go to the uh, public hearing then. Proponents, uh, you would have uh, 15 minutes for presentation. Mr. King, if you'd introduce the uh, individuals who are proponents. Will do. The first person signed up to speak in support of this request is Garrett Maravetz. Garrett, if you'd like to comment, please unmute yourself, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. Thank you. Uh, Garrett Maravetz with Harris Teeter Real Estate. Uh, address is 701 Crestdale Road, Matthews, North Carolina, 28105. Uh, just want to give you a, a brief introduction here to, to express my support for the project and uh, let you know that we thank staff for working with us to really polish off um, what I think is a really great project. All of these locations where we've um, built these um, added amenities to the store, um, we've really received a lot of positive customer feedback. Um, given that, that they can save a lot of money on, on gas with uh, the loyalty program that we have in place, um, as well as the convenience of, of being able to get that gas um, while they at the same place where they shop. Uh, with that, I cede the rest of the time here to Megan Fitzsimmons, who's the engineer on the project, and I'm sure walk you through the rest of it. Thank you. Ms. Fitzgibbons? Hi. Yeah. Next. Good evening, everyone. Best record, please. Yeah, my name is Megan Fitzsimmons. I'm with Kimley Horn. Um, address is 200 South Tryon Street, uh, Suite 200, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's 28202. Um, we're requesting a site plan amendment for the Whitaker Square Shopping Center, um, which will allow for a proposed Harris Cedar Fuel Center within the parking field of that existing shopping center development. Um, requiring a site plan amendment for this project due to a conditional zoning plan um, the original master plan for the development didn't originally include the fuel center development plans. Um, just a little background on the project. This will be a five multiple product dispenser or 10 fueling position um, proposed fuel center. It includes a 240 square foot kiosk and an overhead canopy. Um, fuel center is allowed currently within the highway business zoning um, and it's been designed in accordance with all of the city zoning requirements. Um, Garrett kind of mentioned, but quick introduction to just the Harris Teeter Fuel Center program in general. Um, these were kind of designed as a accessory use to the existing Harris Teeter grocery stores. Um, you know, you can go ahead and go into the store, get your groceries, go pick up any prescriptions you might have in the pharmacy, and then also use your fuel points to go ahead and fill up at the neighboring gas station as well. Um, it's been designed architecturally to match the shopping center. So not just your, you know, pull off on the side of the highway and grab gas and fill up and leave. Um, these are more an accessory for existing Harris Teeter customers. Um, you've got the same, you know, friendly Harris Teeter employees working at the fuel center. Um, and it's truly just implemented as an internal capture to existing shopping center or existing customers within the shopping center. Um, we've been working with staff to kind of address a lot of their concerns with the plan, um, address any comments and kind of listen to some of our neighbors in the process as well. Um, heard them and worked towards 
implementing some additional pedestrian access to the site. Um, so pedestrian access to the fuel center, as well as to some of the small shops that are already existing in the shopping center itself. Um, and then additionally, closing a couple of the internal driveways that have kind of been problem areas to the site and to the parking lot in general. Um, we have sent property owner notifications to all of our neighbors within 500 feet. Um, and have also worked with council member Jeff, Jeff McIntosh to include some additional members outside of that 500 square foot radius, um, just to give them a heads up on the project as well um, and keep them in the loop. So kind of a general gist of the project. Um, happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Fitzsimmons. Uh, anyone else for the proponents? Mayor joins Matt Edwards is the only other person signed up for the proponents. Matt, if you'd like to speak, uh, unmute, give your name and address for the record and begin your remarks. Yep. Good evening. This is Matt Edwards. I'm at 515 Zachary Lane, Fort Mill, South Carolina. Um, I actually don't have anything to add. Um, just to thank staff for, for working with, with, with us and Harris Teeter throughout this process. Uh, and we're here to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. For the uh, opponents, um, Mr. King, if you'd introduce the, those in opposition. Absolutely. We have one person signed up to speak in opposition. It's Paul Kostachenko. Paul, if you'd like, go ahead and unmute, give your name and address for the record, and begin your remarks. Yes. Uh, my name is Paul Kostachenko, um, and I am at uh, 3129 Allerton Lake Drive, Winston-Salem. I live within a half mile to a mile of the proposed gas station. I'm also the owner of Coco Properties, and we own a commercial piece of real estate, basically kitty corner to the proposed site. Um, and I want to voice my opposition to this project. I will state that in this area, there are currently uh, three full-time gas stations within a three block radius. There used to be four gas stations within a three block radius. And about three or four years ago, one of them went out of business, presumably due to lack of business. And I don't believe that this area is suffering from a lack of fuel dispensing sites. Um, the proposed gas station that is being considered will be a 24 hour unmanned fuel station. And what that means is there will be somebody on site in the kiosk until 10 p.m. at night. After 10 p.m. at night, this site will be unmanned. So if there is a problem at the site, if there is a fuel spill, if there's crime at the site, there will be nobody attending to these matters. These, uh, pr this proposed project is going to bring increased crime to this area. This area has already suffered from problems with drug dealing in the Whitaker Square parking lot that the police department has done a great job. They've taken care of the issue, um, but now the community is considering adding a site where people can meet 24 hours a day in the middle of the night to do, unfortunately, likely nefarious business besides getting fuel, and this is a detriment to our community. The second issue I'd like to raise is that let's think about the environmental impact of this proposal. This is a fuel station, complete with underground fuel tanks. We all know that over years, there's gonna be leakage from these tanks. It's just inevitable. There's gonna be leakage onto ground from the gassing of vehicles. There's gonna be idling vehicles which are gonna increase local um, uh, air or increase pollution in the local area. And these are things that I don't believe our community needs. I think what our community needs, if they ever propose to develop this area, which I'm not opposed to developing this area. If you wanna develop it for something other than a fuel site, I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but is another gas station in our community, in this area already congested with gas stations, something that we are, something that we need in our community? I mean, there's a lot of communities throughout our country, frankly, that are setting moratorium on the creation of new gas stations because maybe as an environmental impact to our local community and our nationwide community, is this something that we really need? 
do we need more gas stations or we do we need something that might be more appropriate? I honestly wouldn't be opposed to an electric charging station. That would be fine by me. But we're talking about something that has a significant um, environmental impact on our local community. It has a significant crime impact on our local community. Um, and I don't think it's something that we want to consider going in the direction of. Others have already mentioned the significant traffic impact on the Peace Haven Road and Robin Hood Road areas. This will obviously um, contribute to more problems uh, with the traffic patterns in these areas. Already the Chick-fil-A, which is located right next to this property is one of the busiest restaurants in the area. And that Chick-fil-A doesn't have great access for people to come in and leave the restaurant and proceed to um, Robin Hood Road because they have to leave the rest, they have to leave the restaurant area. They have to make a U-turn, get onto the road uh, to get up to Robin Hood. That causes congestion, potential for accidents. This station is going to be right next door to the to the um, uh, Chick-fil-A. It's only going to contribute to the traffic issues. As far as I've read through the proposal, there is no plan for altering the traffic patterns in these areas that can accommodate these issues. So I think that we're making a mistake by permitting this type of development in this area. Um, so I guess in conclusion, I would like to say that if it is in the long-term legacy plans of uh, the Planning Commission to plan some type of commercial development in this area. I am not necessarily opposed to that, but I am definitely opposed to putting in a gas station that's gonna be unmanned for at least eight to 10 hours at night. Um, and the environmental impacts that I think it's gonna present to our local community are simply not worth um, the benefit of having somebody get a few pennies off through their Harris Teeter points on their gas, which we maybe should be using less of in the future anyways. I thank you for listening to my comments. Thank you very much. Uh, the uh, uh, proponents would have three minutes for uh, rebuttal if you'd like to add anything. Hi, yep, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think, so as Paul mentioned, I think one of the main concerns was safety and security measures on these sites. Um, they are manned from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, after hours is just by credit card purchases only. Um, but there is a benefit of, you know, security measures, security cameras being put in place at all of these fuel centers. Um, they're also well lit. Um, so not exactly an area where I don't think anybody would want to be sitting around um, involved in any kind of crime as it would be kind of visible to most people within the shopping center as well. Um, I think some other comments um, just in regards to environmental impacts. Um, each one of these fuel centers has a spill prevention plan put in place. Um, those are placed at the fuel centers and kept on site at all times. Um, and also the underground storage tanks that will be placed on site um, are much newer in technology than what we've been seeing in you know, previous gas stations that have been installed 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, we're not seeing environmental impacts with these new developments that are coming into place. Um, with all of the measures that are put in place, you know, we do have um, emergency stop buttons that are placed on site if there are any spills after hours um, and that kind of thing. I think one of the main comments was traffic um, and just wanting to point out, you know, most of the calculations that we see from these fuel centers are in regards to internal capture, um, not exactly bringing in a ton of new trips from the main road, but using a lot of existing customers and getting them involved in the program. So it's not exactly adding a ton of trips to the site. Um, it's just adding that additional use for existing customers that are already using um, the gas station, you know, the grocery store and the existing other small sites um, in the area. And just wanna open it up if Garrett has anything else to add um, or if Matt does as well, even the remaining more time. Certainly, thank you, Megan. I think you did a great job of reviewing there um, of the program and, and trying to address the concerns that were raised. Um, I, do, I do would like I would like to note that this is really a kind of a different go to business strategy than most gas stations or convenience stores. It doesn't really lend itself to hanging out or 
you know, uh, we don't sell alcohol on site or anything like that. So, you know, you're really just kind of gassing and going. Um, so it's, it is really a different model than what um, some of the other gas stations in the area might be um, conducting. Um, in addition to that, you know, Megan did touch on some of the security features of the facility. We do have 360 degree, extremely high end um, cameras that are constantly running and the facility is being remotely monitored uh, 24 seven. So in some instances, actually, we've run into where people actually feel more secure having the facility there, um, especially overnight. If something is nefarious going on in the area, any of outside observer can actually go to the fuel center and have somebody immediately contacted by pressing one of those buttons. Sorry, but you're, doesn't you're necessarily have to be there. I'm sorry, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, opposition, uh, would you have a comment you'd like to make in rebuttal? You have three minutes if you like. You're muted if you're saying anything. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So my number one comment is, can I make the statement that I am the only member of this community who's addressing this issue right now? I appreciate the comments of Ms. Fitzsimmons and others, but they are in Charlotte, South Carolina, and I understand they represent the interests of Harris Teeter, <coughs> the local interests, uh, I guess I'm the only one on this. I don't think that this is something that our community should consider. Uh, now, Ms. Fitzsimmons mentions that, well, they have a plan in place for if there's a spill. So what's the plan if, so, if, uh, if there's a major leak in the middle of the night with nobody there? I'm just curious, if, if, and I'd allow her to rebut to that issue. I, I don't think there's probably an adequate plan to address that issue. I think having an unmanned gas station in this area I don't think this is a good idea. You would feel safe pulling up at 2.30 in the morning knowing that there's nobody in the kiosk there to watch you while you pump gas. I don't think I'd feel safe in that situation. I don't think this is something our community needs. We need to think about the security of our area and the environment of our area. Does Winston-Salem need another gas station in a three block radius of three other gas stations? I just don't think that's the case. We have good supply here. We're not in a deficit. I think the council members should really think about all the impacts of this project when making their decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll declare the public hearing closed and I recognize Councilmember McIntosh. I move for one approval, a statement of consistency for approval of this item and two approval of agenda item Z7. Thank you. Second. Sir. Motion second. Any discussion? Mayor, I've got a comment. Oh, yes, go ahead, Councilor McIntosh. And what they're trying to do is capture the dollars that are on site already. This is not about throwing a big Speedway or Love sign up and trying to bring people in from, from Robinson on the corner and the Exxon station right next door. So their whole premise is to get people coming out of the Harris Teeter to spend some more money with Harris Teeter. And it works because it's convenient. And I, and you will, not, you will not be pulling people from other, other areas. It is the most valuable real estate in in the city as far as um, as far as retail goes, and that's not going to change. Um, I've been in the commercial business, real estate business for a long time, and what the pro uh, proponents are saying about the safety of USTs or underground storage tanks is absolutely true. Uh, the nightmares, if you've ever been involved with a plume um, from a rotting uh, steel tank, you know that the EPA is not very kind to folks that to try to get away with that these days. So from a technology standpoint, there are, there are cutoffs on, on, the, the, um, on the pumps. I think the, uh, the possibility of a, anything approaching a major spill are extremely low. Um, so uh, I'm in favor of this and plan to support it. Thank you, Mr. McIntosh. We're ready to go to the uh, roll call. Councilor Larson. And you're muted, John. Yes. Thank you. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Mundy? Aye. Councilman Scipio? No. Uh, Mayor Pro Tim Adams? Yes. Councilman Taylor? Yes. Councilman McIntosh? Aye. And Councilman Burke? Yes. Thank you. The motion passes seven in favor, one opposed, with Councilman Scipio voting no. Thank you. Uh, we will move now to item Z8. 
Adam Z8, published here in our site, Plan <coughs> Movement of Psi Delta House Corporation, for changes related to the addition of an accessory building in the northern portion of the site in our RMA-S zoning district. The property is located on the north side of Polo Road, west of Long Drive, containing approximately 1.08 acres located in the north ward. Planning Board recommends approval of petition. Thank you, Mr. King. Do we have opposition to this item? Mayor joins, we do not have opposition, but you should have received um, a request for withdrawal of this of this uh, particular zoning case. All right, certainly we will. Uh, this is uh, Mayor Pro Tem Adams Ward. I would entertain a motion for her if she would like to uh, okay. allow Mayor, this item. Yes, uh, City Clerk said two motions. Uh, the eight motion is I move for approval of petitioner's request to withdraw W3479. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion to allow the petitioner to withdraw. Any discussion on the motion? Not a yes vote allows this item or this uh, petition to be withdrawn. Councilmember Larson? Yes. Councilmember Clark? Yes. Councilmember Mundy? Aye. Councilman Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Councilman Taylor. Yes. Councilman McIntosh. Aye. Councilman Burke. Yes. Thank you. This uh, petition is allowed to be withdrawn. Item Z9. Item Z9, public hearing on resolution of approving financial assistance to Project Hill pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 158-7.1. This item was continued from the May 3rd, 2021 and the June 21st, 2021 City Council meetings. And I recognize Mayor Pro Tem Adams for a motion on this item. Yes, Mayor, uh, I move to continue item Z9 until the City Council's meeting on August 16th, 2021. Thank you, sir. Second. Second. Thank you. We will go to roll call. We yes vote approves the continuance of this item to August 16th. Councilmember Larson. Unmute. Oh, you're muted, John. Again. Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Clark. Yes. Councilmember Mundy. Aye. Councilmember Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Councilmember Taylor. Yes. Councilmember McIntosh. Aye. Councilmember Burke. Yes. Thank you. We'll continue that item to August 16 then. Uh, item Z10. Item Z10, resolution by the City of Winston-Salem approving the memorandum of agreement between the State of North Carolina and local governments on proceeds relating to the settlement of opioid litigation. Thank you. I'd recognize our city attorney, Ms. Carmen. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Adams, and council members. Item Z10 is the uh, resolution approving the allocation plan for the opioid settlement, which is to come in the future between the state of North Carolina, 100 counties, and 17 cities. Again, this is to approve the allocation plan for the opioid settlement, which is to come in the future. There is one little aspect of the plan that's somewhat still outstanding that relates to the attorney fees, but this resolution, if approved, would at least allow us to move forward with um, signing the memorandum of understanding. If that particular issue is not resolved, I'll, of course, get back with the city council. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Mayor? Where is the mayor? <laughs> Did we lose the mayor? He left. Looks like it. He's he the chair. Oh. You want to sip in there, Pertain Adams? Yeah. Um, so you've read it, uh, the Z10, and I see a couple of hands. Uh, can I go ahead and let them ask the questions before the motion? That, that'd be fine. All right, Council Member Larson and then Council Member Scipio. Do we have any idea, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Do we have any idea as to what the amounts are we're talking about under this settlement? 
Has that become clear? It has not. Um, the plan calls for payments over an 18-year period. I've heard it's maybe $3 million for the... can't hear you. I'm sorry. Muted. I keep getting muted here. Um, yes, we're, so we don't really know what the total amounts are yet. Not yet. That's what you're telling me. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Mayor, Mayor Jones, I want to hand Council Member Scipio is next to answer okay, thank question you. or Scipio. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Council Member Larson asked my question. I was wondering if we had an idea of um, what the percentage of payments was going to be. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Carmen? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Adams? Yes, I want to make the comment that I know many of you have received those uh, junk mail things in the mail where they say they got like a hundred million dollars for to settle some claim that you bought a battery in a store. And if you sign off, you might get three cents. It could come down to that. <laughs> You're right. Sorry. <laughs> Don't count our chickens, right? All right, Mayor, uh, we need a motion. We do need to approve this resolution. If there are no further questions, I move for approval of the item. Second, Scipio. Second. Any further discussion? All right, a yes vote approves this resolution. Councilman Larson. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Mundy. Aye. Councilman Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Councilman Taylor. Yes. Councilman McIntosh. Yes. Councilman Burke. Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. And now uh, Z11. Item Z11, resolution ratifying the city's vote in favor of the Purdue former Chapter 11 bankruptcy reorganization plan. Uh, again, I recognize our city attorney, Ms. Carmen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you all may recall that I sent an email communication to you all indicating that the Chapter 11 reorganization plan for Purdue was going up for a vote on or about June, July 14th. Uh, based upon the responses I received, I told outside council to cast a vote in favor of that plan on behalf of the city of Winston-Salem. This resolution affirms that vote that was cast in favor of the plan on behalf of the city of Winston-Salem. It's my understanding about 95% of those eligible to vote did in fact vote in favor of the plan and that there is a confirmation hearing where the judge will, I guess, announce the outcome on about August 9th. Uh, if I entertain any questions, otherwise I ask you approve the resolution. Seeing none, I would need a motion to approve this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? A right, yes vote it does approve the resolution. Councilor Larson. Yes. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Mundy. Aye. Councilor Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Council Member Taylor. Yes. Councilor McIntosh. Aye. Councilor Burke. Yes. Thank you. That is unanimous. Item Z12. Item Z12, closed session. Do we have a need to go into closed session? And I believe uh, Councilman Clark is going to make the motion for us tonight. Thank you, Mayor. I move the City Council go into closed session pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A4 to discuss the location or expansion of an industry or business within the city. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. A yes vote approves going into closed session. Councilor Larson. Yes. Councilor Clark. Yes. Councilor Mundy. Aye. Councilor Scipio. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Adams. Yes. Council Member Taylor. Yes. Councilor McIntosh. Aye. Councilor Burke. Yes. We are approved to go into closed session, so just hang tight and Meredith will move.
So I think everyone is back. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Excuse me, I, I do need a motion to end the closed session, Mr. McIntosh. Motion to end the closed session. <laughs> is there second. A second? second. All in favor of ending the closed session, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed to ending the closed session? We are into open session. Now we entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and uh, second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed to adjourning? We are adjourned. Thank you, Council.